And so we, we, we try to make that, that stuff all about us. And so what I, what I would encourage you to, uh, to, to think about is think of yourselves either as a doormat with a purpose that maybe this is the person that needs to dust their feet off and they need to do it here. And what do you do when your doormat gets too full of dirt? You shake it off. And do you throw it away? Typically not. You, you, well, you know, I'm on a budget. So I'm going to shake it out a few times before I get rid of it, right? But I would also, I would also like to say that if, if you think about the, the, uh, the verbs that occur on a mat, you wipe your feet on it, you stomp on it, you walk on it. I would say that you do those things on a doormat, but you can also do those things on a bridge. And what's the difference between being a doormat and being a bridge? What's the difference? A bridge connects two things. A bridge can connect two things. A bridge can be a tool that, that carries someone over an, an obstacle, right? So I, I live in Moundsview, and it's, um, it's really um, not a diversity mecca, <laughs> Moundsview, right? So um, it's Saturday afternoon, and I'm, um, I'm grabbing all my stuff to do my my Saturday routines, and I decided to grab some lunch. So it's about 10.30 in the morning, so I go into a, a local restaurant to go grab some food, and, um, you know, I, I check out my signs of safety, right? So I want to know where all the exits are, the fire extinguishers, and, you know, the people in the, in the bar and stuff. And when I, when I go into the bar, what I notice is that there is a guy that's drunk at the end of the bar. I mean, red face just drunk, slurred speech, the whole caricature, right? And it's 10.30 in the morning. So there's a couple of things that I know about this guy, right? He obviously comes to the bar pretty often, and the staff know him to allow him to get that drunk this early in the morning. The second thing that I also recognize is that he probably feels like this is his home, right? I mean, he's, he's comfortable here. And that I might be perceived as an outsider to his home, right? So I, uh, so I recognize all that, and um, I order my lunch, and I close the menu. And in the process of closing the menu, the guy has moved from the end of the bar right next to me. And I'm like, Ugh. So I'm, you know, I taught high school. I worked in the residential treatment center. I, uh, you know, I, I wrestled in high school. So I'm not afraid of a fight. You know, <laughs> we can get down, right? Um, but drunk people are just—they make me nervous because they're just so unpredictable. You know, you don't know what, what's going to happen. And so I just kind of, I just kind of sigh, and I, you know, we start making small talk about the weather and all sorts of stuff. And, um, and then he moves into his thesis as to why he sat next to me. And he says, you know what? I don't like niggers. And I'm like, whoa, that's a heck of an introduction. <laughs> and so, uh, so I do what any good Minnesotan would do and change the subject, right? <laughs> so I change the subject, but then something in my heart said, go back to that, right? So I go back to it and I say, well, when you use that word, what are you talking about? And he says, I mean, uh, I'm talking about um, people who are uh, uneducated, inarticulate, uh, people on welfare, and, you know, he had all this negative stuff to say. And so I asked him just a simple question, do you know any white people who fit that category? And he says, yes. So I said, oh, how about those twins? You know, so we start talking about sports and all that kind of stuff. And then he leans back over to me and he says, you know what? I don't like niggers, but I like you. Now, I'm really conflicted about all of this stuff, right? And, um, and so uh, I, I just asked a follow-up question. I said, well, when you use that word, w w you know, when you say you like me, what is it about me that you like? And he said, you know, you seem to have a good head on your shoulders. You're, you're educated. You got a good job. And, you know, all this good stuff he's saying about me. And so I, I look at him and I said, um, what if all the people who you think look like me, all the people that you think look like me that you've met were idiots? 
And everybody else that you haven't met yet is just like me. And he looks at me and he says, I got to pee. And so he gets up and he goes off to the restroom. And I'm like, Phew. You know, I, I'm going to get out of here. I haven't, you know, we haven't had any major altercations. You know, let me just get out of here. And so I, um, I, I, I get my check. I start heading towards the door. And guess who meets me at the door? It's this guy. But there's something different about him. His hair is combed over to the side. He's got water driplets on his face. And he has a damp napkin in his hand. And he reaches out to me with the damp napkin. And he says, I have chicken. If you ever need fresh eggs, give me a call. What do I do? I take the napkin. I go my way. He goes his way. What happened in that interaction? What's that? He got to know me. Would you have understood if I said, I'm not going to let this guy call me outside of the name that my parents gave me. I'm going to give this guy a piece of my mind. I am not going to be a doormat. What would have happened for him? I would have reinforced everything that he thought about people who he thinks look like me. All too often as helpers, as professionals, as, as people who are fighting for justice, um, we spend way too much time trying to uh, be right, but not necessarily do right. And so what, what I would submit to you is that I'm not asking you to let people call you outside of your name. I'm not asking you to take disrespect from folks. But I am asking you to be critical about the interactions that you have. Or is this an opportunity for you to teach somebody something? Is this an opportunity for you to make a connection with someone? Is this an opportunity for you to give someone the dignity and honor that they may not have for themselves? The biggest crime in this picture is the fact that this woman is being denied the dignity and honor of being human. So what is dignity? What does that mean, dignity? What's dignity? Marco. <laughs> What's dignity? Respect. Respect? Is dignity something that you have or something that you give? Something you have or something you give? Is it something you give? Okay. I would say that it's both. That it's something that you have and something that you give. And the interesting thing about dignity is if you don't give it to people, they'll try and take it from you. I don't know if this has happened to you, but it happens to me all too often that I'm either at a stop sign or a traffic light and there's a group of teenagers trying to cross the street and you would think that they could cross a little bit faster than they do, right? And inevitably, there's one teenager in the group that makes eyeball to eyeball contact with me as he's just kind of strolling across the street, right? As if to say, your kind, your people, adults, don't see young people anytime, but you will recognize me right now, right? So he tries to take that, that dignity. Um, what is honor? Who in our society have, have we said that we will give honor to? Who? Parents. Our parents, right? Honor your mother and your father, right? Um, we, we said that we'll give high respect to servicemen and women who fight wars on our behalf, for senior citizens who've come before and, and done really powerful things that allowed us to be here, that we will give them honor, respect at a high level. We also, uh, but please raise your hand if you've either purchased the ticket or passed the test that made you eligible to be born on this planet. <laughs> None of us have done anything to bring ourselves here. 
We're, we're constantly here trying to get our dignity and honor of being human so that we can get our significance, our belonging, and our safety. And we're trying to be human, finding our purpose in being to be human. And when I looked for a definition of the word human, I found something very interesting, that there are two definitions of the word human. One is being a noun, a biped, um, opposable thumbs, a big brain, and a belly button. If you ever encounter a person without a belly button, be concerned. <laughs> Homo sapiens sapien, the one who knows they know that they exist. And then there's also human, the adjective. And what do adjectives do? They describe the noun. <clears throat> So what, do, what is it that we, we teach the youngest of our species, our nieces, our nephews, our children, grandchildren? What do we teach them about what it means to be human? Respect other to respect other people. Be kind. To be kind. To share. To, share. Be honest. to be honest. Respect your elders. Respect your elders. So part of what, what, what we battle against, particularly those of us who care about other people and who care about uh, the world that we live in, and you know, I find it very interesting that people often say, you know, we need to save the earth. And I laugh because I believe that the earth will be fine. We won't, <laughs> right? But those people who care about people, um, what we're striving for, what we're trying to give people is their dignity and honor of being human. Because there are tons of things and people who are trying to take this away from folks. Marketing thrives on decreasing this in individuals, right? Because what they say is, if you buy my product, then you will have this. If you engage in these practices by paying this money, you will get this, right? So um, that is...